You're live. Welcome to the August, not August, I wish it was August. <laughs> Welcome to the April 2020 stat show on Not an Agent. I'm Jeff, this is Formafest, and uh, we're going to talk about some stats today. Uh, let's get into one of the more interesting stats that I found anyways um, for Metro Vancouver. So Metro Vancouver, what we're looking at here is listings that have sold uh, over or under asking price. And then you know we, we did see that uh, that, that kind of uptick in in bidding wars. The situation, the pandemic hits, and nothing's going over ask anymore. In in fact, if you look at our daily stats, you'll see that uh, pretty much day over day, you're looking 85, 90 percent of listings are going under list price right now. So is that indicative of a uh, prices dropping? Not yet, but people are making moves on on. Uh, properties so that that's interesting from the realtor perspective what are they telling the clients are they listing a bit higher um just like i think what realtors generally do is they say oh we can get you x for this property and it's generally a bit higher it's so they can suck in the client right yeah yeah and then they have to talk them down from there, mm -hmm. depending on the market. Yeah, and I've had a few a few discussions with a few realtors, and one of the discussions I had was interesting because it was uh, they they said that essentially what they were doing was they would they tell their clients that uh, you know list list a little bit higher because you want your buyer to feel like they got a deal. You end up selling it for what you're just above what your floor was. So, um, you know, there, there's different tactics for for different types of markets that realtors. Use. And what I'm generally seeing though, and you'll see this over and over again with different realtors is uh, they'll say, well, let's list it a little high for a week or two, see if someone bites and then we'll drop the price. And that seems to be a general tactic. Right, right. So it kind of obfuscates the, the list price. Does the list price really mean, is it, is it a good reference really? I, I don't think the list price is a good reference at all. If you, if you take a look at, uh, at what things are selling for right now. Like some of them are selling for a million dollars under ask. So, right. So the truth is the truth of the whole situation is the sell price. Mm -hmm. That's what people are actually, because yeah. you can, you the can, sell price. you can list above or below depending on what your strategy is. Sometimes the strategy is to list low and get a bunch of offers depending on where the market is. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the list prices are, are not, not not good for much really right and so that, that takes us into uh, one of our charts from I tell insights uh, so what this is is a, it's a comparison of your average home price versus the HPI so the average home price uh, that's in orange uh, and your HPI is in blue so the the home price index um, It'll tell you, you know, in, over as an average, how much are houses selling for, properties selling for. Um, what this shows, and, and Eric Escobar's got a good, uh, good blog post on this on Can Re Invest, uh, is that the home price indicator, and and you can see the peaks here uh, denoted by the red dots. The uh, the HPI, what that's doing is it's uh, it's actually a lagging indicator. So if you're using the, the stats that the real estate board is releasing, uh, it's going to take a couple of months for those to reflect what the actual prices in the market are. So you're not, you're not being Gretzky. You're not going where the puck's going to be. You're going where the puck was, right? So if you're using that as an indication of what you should list your price, list your house at, um, you know, you, you might be unpleasantly surprised when it's sitting on the market for a while. Uh, right. You may be unpleasantly surprised when you miss the peak. If, so it's it's interesting because this isn't the first time that uh, I've seen this uh, been called out where your average price, uh, if you're looking at average sale prices, the HPI that the that the uh, boards are using, it actually lags by a month or two. So there's a couple of things there. Let's, uh, you don't want to be chasing the market down. So if you think the market's, you know, somewhere up here and you price up there, market's coming down, but you're always a step behind. You're never going to sell your place. 
And uh, I guess it makes it harder to know as a buyer on the buy side where the market really is. Uh, so, you know, if, if, if you are a buyer and you're looking to buy right now, understand what you might lose in the short term and what that might mean for you if you, if you do need to sell whatever you just bought and, you know, stay safe with your finances in that aspect. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, that, uh, that seems there's a lot of people predicting, making predictions, mm -hmm. but it's such a, it seems like such a liquid state we're in. Things yeah. are moving all over the place. It's hard. Suretsky made a tweet about that saying like, it's, it's kind of silly to make predictions at this point because so many things are in the air. Right. If right. you look at like um, the, the jobs reports, the unemployment, you know, if it's V shaped and it comes back, that's one story. Mm -hmm. um, then things maybe continue. I think that's what a lot of the bulls are hoping for, but I think the people that are um, thinking of it logically, if it's, if you were moving along and then you've got this huge drop, the chances of it coming back to where it was are almost nil. You yeah. know, if you go down, you're going to come back somewhere in the middle, hopefully closer to where it was, but you might see some sales recovery short term, uh, at, at the lower prices, but then for it to get back up to the, uh, the higher prices, it's going to take quite a while. The big story this month is the sales volume falling off a cliff. I have noticed more realtor Facebook advertisements. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. A lot of ads, a lot of people, um, a lot of realtors, uh, got the little ads, seen a little, a couple of videos. One of, one of the videos you keyed on, you were, uh, you were posting under their video. Mm -hmm. trying to maybe expand on what they were saying or fact check uh, yeah. what they were saying. But you think of, it's, it's pretty standard for a real estate cycle rollover that the number of realtors uh, falls off a cliff. I, I got a message from one of my local realtors and what realtors are doing is they're either moving to discount brokerages where their desk, they don't have desk fees and they don't have uh, such high fees just so they can maintain their license. Or there's some that are just letting their license lapse. They pro they're either, they weren't doing so well to begin with, or maybe they know what a real estate cycle looks like and they know that um, there's not gonna be a lot of work for them in the coming years. It's yep. going to be a lot tight, tighter market because into this boom, everybody and their dog wanted to get their license so they can get in on the money train. So mm -hmm. the number of realtors has just shot up. And generally what happens on the downside is they all go away. Yeah. So that's what we're looking for now. And let's do a oh, quick before and after shot here. So this is a, this was somebody in the 2000s. We won't we won't go into who this was, but um, that's what they were looking like, uh, you know, before. And here they are. Here they are now. Hmm. Right. So you know they're starting to look a little scraggly. So that's one. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Let's uh. Let's pull up. Let's pull up another here. Uh. I do Jamie Hooper maybe. This is kind of free advertising too, right? Like you've got people are gonna go check him out after, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, don't, don't dig too deep, people. <laughs> There's a rabbit hole hole you don't want to fall down. <laughs> certainly is. <laughs> certainly is. And you gotta put it out to this guy. Like he's got probably a decent tech setup. Uh just needs some better software, I think. But oh yeah, his uh his backgrounds. His city, his city background was good, except you could tell it was looping because the cars <laughs> would loop behind him. They were just small in the background and you could just see them looping the same car going by. Yeah. 
Okay, so we're about to go into Mr. Hooper here. But, and you know, I think this is the same case for everybody. Everybody's looking a little ragged right now, right? Um, yeah. So here, here's what Jamie used to, used to look like when he was photographing before. And here he is now. Yeah. You know, so every, yeah. everyone's having a, a tough time of it. Yeah. Or maybe they're just letting it loose, letting it yeah. hang loose. Why not? Back to the sixties. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's let's like talk a, about it's like a playoff beard. <laughs> well, it's about yeah, somebody's gotta grow them this year. <laughs> it's the realtors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll I'll shave when real estate opens up again. It's gonna be a big beard, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Z ZLT added a few interesting things. Uh but uh let's let's just talk about some of the uh historical sales prices. Uh, so let's pop into actual boards. So the real estate board, Greater Vancouver, uh, you know, things, of course, things picked up in the last couple of months, but they've dropped again. And, you know, my guess is this is going to continue trending downwards for a couple of months. Um, mm -hmm. That's our historical sales prices for the last five years. Our peak was probably up around here somewhere. So you're looking at 1.5, nice round number actually for a median. Uh, and now we're down to 1.35 after a few, you know, cycles there. Um, and then we can see the difference, like your, your condos have stayed pretty flat. Went up a little bit last year, but again, they've come down. Cause you got to think of what would bring, what would actually bring the prices down. So the, ba the banks are tightening up a little bit, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but what else, because sales volume has gone down, but listings have gone down too. So say you're in the market to buy, what would push you, uh, to buy a cheaper place, spend right. less. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think the people, like if you're buying now, you've got to really want to buy, right? Well, yeah, it's got to be a special property or there's an opportunity. So one of the things that we might see is we might see an increase in sales prices because some of these luxury properties are going at a steep discount now. So right. if you, you know, if you wanted to buy that McMansion or, or that mansion, whichever way you look at it, uh, it could be the time to do that uh, because, you know, smart money is, uh, you know, that people that have cash, they know that, you know, it's, might be the opportune time to buy these luxury properties. Uh, you know, something that was listed at 25 million going for 17, uh, that, that might be, it might be worthwhile at that point. Uh, maybe you really want to live on, live on the side of a cliff in West Vancouver, have that ocean view. Uh, mm -hmm. so, you know, as, as the prices come down, maybe there's that property that you've been keeping an eye on for a while. Maybe there's a particular place you really wanted to live. Maybe there's a style of house like, uh, that, you know, doesn't come up often. And one came up in an area you want to be in. That's that's what makes you decide to pull the trigger. So that, those are some things that might make you want to buy, uh, or so, some other things that are still generating some of these sales. You might have sold your house, and you you need a place to live. Uh, you don't necessarily want to rent. You're going to take the proceeds from your house and buy another place. So uh, th those I guess are the, the other things. thing is the people buying now. They either and or they have uh, a really healthy down payment, mm -hmm. so they feel secure there, yeah. or they have a really secure income. They either mm -hmm. have a dual income household, or they have you know two people that have a very secure uh, jobs, so right. they can feel confident buying, which mm -hmm. would kind of lead me to believe that the people buying now are more well off. They, they have the security of being able to put a lot. Because if, if you think about it, if you're financially on the cusp, on the edge, right. you're going to hold back now. Yes. Because you don't know if your job's going to hold up. You don't know what your finances are going to be. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're only going to put down 5%. Those type of buyers are moving away. I would think that the people buying now are the ones that are more financially secure 
yeah, in a better absolutely. position. Or I'm hearing stories rather from uh, from mortgage brokers about uh, you know if someone was gainfully employed, but they uh, so, you know served payments showed up in their bank account. Uh, the bank is saying, well, either this is tax fraud or you've lost your job. Either way, we're not giving you this mortgage. Um, yeah, yeah, which speaks to the people who yeah. are buying. You know, they kept their job. They're financially secure. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so it's uh, yeah, definitely like there's there's a there's a small small subset of buyers that are able to buy right now mm -hmm. uh, and feel secure in buying for sure. Uh, that security when you're when you're spending, you know, five hundred thousand million, one point two million dollars, uh, you better be secure that you're not losing, you know, hundred percent of your net worth with that, right? So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so the price discovery now is kind of, it's a bit out the window. Mm -hmm. um, we aren't going to find the true price discovery when the, the market opens up. Uh, people are able to default, the courts open up, right. all that gets pushed through, then we'll have price discovery again. Going into fall is going to be an interesting time because there's, like if you go around, to, I think a lot of people don't understand what's actually going on right now. If 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 you were to go around to some of the some of your usual haunts, uh, like my gym, for example, uh, it's got a eviction notice on the front door right now. Like it's and it's been there for a while, but uh, like I hadn't been through there. And in fact, the uh, the only reason I saw it, my uh, one of my friends has an office down there, and just happened to go down to the office to pick up some paperwork. Uh, and saw this eviction notice on the front door, shot me a picture. I hadn't been down there for you know, two months now. So mm. I, I wouldn't have known that the gym was getting yeah. evicted, right? So Yeah, I saw a picture out of Texas. I forget where it was, but they're, they're kind of opening up again. But it's a ghost town. Because mm -hmm. you can open things up, but the people have to want to go to the gym, to the restaurant. There's a lot of stories about that. And again, the idea that things have gone down and they're just V-shaped and will come right back up within a month to where it was mm -hmm. is pretty well next to impossible in my books. Yeah, you're get, you're hoping for it to come as close to, but it's people people who have been laid off. Only a certain percentage of those people are going to be. Uh, coming back to the workforce that's right so it's and the problem is if real estate is priced for perfection we're we're not coming back to perfection again no not at it's all. not the banking system is going to be different the consumer is going to be different mm -hmm. the work the 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 workforce is going to be different like you think of it from an employer standpoint this is just shoved in their face that their employees are a liability right yeah that yeah if they can automate a process they should mm -hmm. if they can get rid of those employees they should mm -hmm. um if they can outsource if they can contract those you know in, yeah. like when you've got an employee that's your employee if you contract a company to do it well if they aren't fulfilling you just switch over to another company that's you, right you're you can you can move way quicker so mm -hmm. it's going to change so much that yep. it's just impossible that things are going to come back to the level that they were mm -hmm. well and with a lot of companies are saying they're not opening their offices again so yeah 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 and that's going to change that's going to change the dynamic of the cities mm -hmm. you know office yeah. space and the need to be close to your office mm -hmm. it's going to change uh it's going to change a lot yeah. Now I can't think of too many reasons that it would be bullish for city real estate. I can think of a couple of reasons why places just outside of the city, the burbs, it mm -hmm. would be bullish for that. Cause now if you can work from home, well, maybe you don't want a townhouse or a condo. Maybe you want a house with a yard. So right. those places, it's going to draw that demand further and further out. Around the turn of the century, there were you know popular science articles or something to that effect that were talking about 
uh, rural versus urban and how, you know, there's going to be huge, uh, some sort of huge struggle between the two. Uh, because the population, the rural population, the urban population was equalizing at about 50-50, right? So, uh, which, you know, to some degree uh, is true now. And I think that, you know, if I had a choice on where to live, I'd probably, I wouldn't be living in the city. I'd be living outside of the city right now. Um, and I think you you may have had that choice as well, right? So, um, yeah, yeah, so there's, yeah, there's, so... It's going to be interesting, but the thing about right now is, um, I think people think too short short term as far as real estate goes. It's mm -hmm. it, everything's on hold right now. We aren't going to see what's going to happen. Like the mortgage, what's the mortgage deferral time frame is over. I think it was like six months they were giving. Yeah, yeah, six months. So you got to wait yeah, for that to go that. through. Um, the the CERB. That's four months, right? Yeah, four months. So you got to wait for that. Yeah. Um, what else? There's uh, wage subsidies. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how long they were going to last, but, you know, in that four to six months, maybe. Yeah. Um, uh, BC government is giving uh, all the workers a thousand bucks. That was probably a one-time shot. So you got to right. wait for that right. to filter through. And then you have your essential worker top ups. There's a lot of talk about um, taxes. You could see a, a deflation <laughs> as a result of uh, oh. tight. <laughs> Did you lose your headphones on that one? Yeah. <laughs> um, the the real Just estate the deflation <laughs> could come as a result of uh, a result of higher taxes on purchases too, right? The amount of money that is being given out right now is astounding mm -hmm. and they're gonna have to pay that back basically um some of it's gonna come tax time a lot of the serb is gonna get paid back oh you shouldn't have done that pay it back yeah. so they'll get a bit of it back then where's it all gonna come from safety comes at a cost it's never free if the economy suffers people pay for it with their lives there is going to be some type of uh, price fall in real estate countrywide. I mm -hmm. think that's a solid. The, the demand on the buy and sell side has gone down, but the, the demand on the buy side has gone down further. Yeah. So it's moving into a buyer's market. Well, the, the other thing to keep in mind too is people aren't feeling the rent eviction FOMO right now. Right? Mm. because you can't get evicted right now. Like yeah, you can get evicted, but you really had to have effed it up. Uh, in normal circumstances, it takes quite a while to evict somebody. Mm -hmm. I was ta uh, So it's like they've got this buffer from the government, can't get evicted. And then at the end of this, they can still say, well, all you have to do is say, I'm not leaving. This is my home. Right. And they've got to go through the whole court process to get mm -hmm. you evicted. So that gives you another buffer. Yeah. So it's going to take a while for that whole mess to play out. I've been talking to somebody in Victoria and they're saying that rents are plummeting. They're, they're starting to incentivize rents. They're giving away groceries to get you in a rental. Right. So who's That's to incredible. say, how, who's to say out of, mm. out of when this is all moving through in you know three four months, are they even going to evict that tenant if the market is looking? If the tenant says, "All right, this, it's over now, mm -hmm. I'm going to start paying again," are they are they going to hold it against them that they didn't pay and evict them? Are they going to you know cut their loss and say, "All right, just pay your rent from now on and just keep them"? The economy is definitely changing when we come out of this. Yeah, I think it's safe to say the golden age of Airbnbs is over. Mm -hmm. That's done. And, and so, like, I think that you're like when I first when I moved to Calgary, uh, all the rental places were giving away TVs. You know, uh, so mm -hmm. if they're only starting with groceries, man, <laughs> it's uh, that, that's uh, that's still a low bar yeah, compared I to think, what it could get to. Yeah, I think if you're a tenant, you've got negotiating room right now. Mm -hmm. If you're in Victoria, Vancouver, and a lot of other places that had a, uh, a lot of Airbnbs around. Um, the, the, the airline industry 
it only works at full capacity, right? Right. Like they, every plane is full pretty well, you know, on the major routes. If they've got a, I don't know if you've seen the the renderings of the new seating patterns that they're mm-hmm. going to have to do, uh, or they're going to have to. My thought was is that they're going to push forward certificates, right? Certificates saying you've either had the 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 shot or you've had um, uh, vaccination exposure. Yeah. yeah. Then, Community. if everybody on the plane has one of those, they can pack them up just as normal right but i don't think the modern airline industry works if it's half capacity and there's a lot of um animosity towards airbnb in general i think this is kind of it's almost like they're down it's time to kick them (laughs) basically (laughs) yeah where i am now i would not use an airbnb right I would just on principle, I would not use one. Mm -hmm. Um, It'd be different if it wasn't taking housing stock out of the market, if they played by the same rules as the hotel industry. Right. uh, Then it'd be different, but they don't. No. So it's, I'm not, I'm not going to use Airbnb Mm -hmm. on principle, even if it is cheaper. I'm going to go, go to a hotel. That's what hotels are for. Because Airbnb isn't that old, like as like a, a commonly known. Ten years. Ten years. Yeah. And then that's when it started, and then it's only gotten really big in the last, say, five years. Mm-hmm. So I think it's becoming more common knowledge that it's destroying the housing market. Mm-hmm. You know, that it's got a huge impact on the housing market. So I think that's just coming coming through now. I think the def- the, the default once the courts open mm-hmm. cuz there's so many businesses like small businesses and big businesses that are filing for bankruptcy, yeah. closing down. So many of these restaurants are just going to say, "You know what? We were just making it before yeah. there's already restaurants that are closing down, but there's going to be even more closing down. Well, the auction houses are busy right now, and uh, you can you can tell how an economy is doing somewhat from prices at auction houses, and and they're down like crazy uh, because there, there's just like a flood. Like if you want if you want a new treadmill, just go on Able Auction site and wait for the next gym to be auctioned off, and you'll get one. You know, right, 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 right. So, um, so that there, there's a big big push with the, uh, with auctions right now. Uh, and so I, I imagine, you know, uh, that, that's going to continue happening. So, uh, yeah, businesses are closing down. That's, that's still going forward. Um, and, and some big businesses, like, um, there were three, like, um, JC a lot of Penny, retail. a lot of JC, retails closing down. Yeah. Yeah. JC Penny is filing for bankruptcy protection. It's a lot of them. And that's going to be a lot of jobs. Yeah, but someone in the chat just said builders would be going bankrupt, and we we started seeing that even before COVID hit. Started seeing some of those quarter order sales popping up on ZLT, where there were you know four or five lots all together showing up on the same day. Yeah, 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 and they're all they're all they're they're incorporated. They're they're almost always incorporated corp, corporations, right? Mm-hmm. So they, it, it doesn't hurt their personal finance. If you if you're like the owner of an incorporation and you go bankrupt, it doesn't it does the the structure of it is meant so it doesn't hurt you, right? Really. Right. So you can just. But it doesn't mean that they can't reach past your corporation if you did something bad. If you did something bad, yeah. So it's it could it could impact you still. <laughs> <laughs> so all the builders who don't declare bankruptcy, you know, they did something wrong. Yeah. <laughs> the foreign buyer story is that when prices fall, because it's kind of a consensus that they'll fall nationally 10%, at least, right? Yeah. So there's this idea that the foreign buyers will come in. Right. So that's another possibility that the foreign buyers come in. But you look at 
the trouble they're having with um, educational institutions. Everybody's leaving, right? Mm -hmm. They're going to, they might have to lay off professors. They're these financial institutions are going to lose tons of income. I forget like the tuition for one of them is like $150,000 for a foreign student. Yeah, that's a lot. So if that's a story, it kind of makes me think that foreign buyer isn't going to come. And the other thing is we're, we're kind of, Canada is kind of in a pool with, uh, United States, the UK, Australia, and maybe New Zealand, although I don't hear too much about them, as far as places for a student to go. Yeah. So the fact that Canada, Australia, New Zealand, their, their housing markets have all been going up, right? If one of them was cheaper, the students would have gone there, right? Mm -hmm. So it's interesting that if any one of those falls, I think they all fall. You know, if Australia gets really cheap, all the demand's going to go to Australia, right? If you can buy a, a cheaper house in Australia, you're going to go to Australia. Yeah. Mm. Some of it's going to be stability. Some of it's going to be, you know, where can my, where, where can my kid get the best education? So yeah, I uh, think they're all kind of on even even footing, Canada, Australia. Yeah, so and so some of it's going to be, you know, where where are most of my countrymen. So uh, you you see a huge influx of like Filipino migration towards Winnipeg, and that's because Winnipeg, like two percent of Winnipeg, is Filipino, uh, mm -hmm. and just a lot of folks have moved there. And uh, so you know, where, where are you going to move? You're going to move where your family is, your friends are, uh, friends of your family, because they're going to help you get set up. So. Um, yeah, it's it, it's. Uh... I gotta, I gotta go. One of my kids is breaking oh. down. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, I think we digressed a bit from some of the stats. Uh, what it, I am going to leave you on uh, one note here. So these are the new listings that have happened so far, uh, and the true new listings that have happened the first few days of May up to fifth. So normally we would see, we we would see uh, a lot of relistings, but. Most of the listings that are happening in May so far, they're actually new. So don't let realtors tell you otherwise. Uh, these are true new listings. They haven't been online for you know the last 90 days. Uh, and these are the listings that happened that were last sold since 2016. So why this is interesting, if you last sold your place in 2016 and you're trying to sell it now, you're probably gonna lose money. Not a sure bet, but Odds aren't in your favor. So uh, that, that's, uh, that's the stat show for April. If you haven't liked this, uh, this channel already, please do so. Hit subscribe, hit the bell. And uh, we'll see you later on tonight when I post the daily stats for Friday. Is it May 8th today? Yeah, Friday, May 8th. So I'll come out later on tonight. Quick stream. Uh, thanks for watching. This has been Not an Agent.